Welcome back to Outer Banks Health. It's the official podcast of Outer Banks Health. We're talking about stress management. We think this is a very good time of year for us here on the Outer Banks to think about ways to manage stress. We are all prepping for the season, uh, and shortly we'll welcome a large influx of our visitors whom we love having here, and we know that they, being here, that it affects our traffic flow, it affects our businesses, all of which can press stress buttons, in addition to the general kind of stress things, money, family. So we decided it would be great to have Janet Kreef as our guest. She is a Nags Head resident a licensed clinical social worker since 2003, and she joined our cancer services team in 2019. Before that, she was with Vitamin Bert T Outpatient Behavioral Health. So she has counseled many people about stress and the importance of being able to manage it. I'm your co-host, Wendy Kelly. And I'm Jennifer Schwartzenberg. Welcome, Janet. It's great to see you today. How are you? Thanks. I'm doing pretty good for a Monday. Good, good. Well, we're really glad to have you here. And a couple of things before we get into what causes stress and how to manage it. Janet, are you able to tell us a little bit about stress, what it is, how it affects our minds and bodies? Well, first off, I just want to say that stress is normal. It's something that all of us are going to go through at one time or another, sometimes on a daily basis. Stress responses help us to adjust to new situations. They help keep us alert and motivated. They also help keep us ready to avoid danger, and that triggers our body's natural response to fight or flight. But when we're stressed continually, with no breaks in between, no relief in between, that's when it starts to take a toll on us physically, emotionally, behavioral symptoms can develop. So our body will give us a lot of warning signs when we're becoming overly stressed, Things like chest pain, racing heart, trouble sleeping and exhaustion, head necks, dizziness, high blood pressure, digestive challenges, weakened immune system, so we find ourselves getting sick easily or more often, mood swings where we're more irritable or we have trouble problem solving, depression, anxiety, and panic attacks can also take place when we're overly stressed. So with a long list of symptoms like that and the variety, how does someone know when it's stress that they're being diagnosed with? What are some of the warning signs that the stress level is above normal and in an unhealthy state? Well, stress is subjective. So there are really no tests that we can do to determine if we're at a dangerous stress level or an abnormal stress level. So we really have to listen to our bodies, look for some of those things that I just mentioned, paying attention to whether we're exhibiting some of these symptoms with no other medical explanation. So I'm thinking, gosh, it'd be great to avoid stress. Can we avoid it? Can, how do we manage it? What do we do? Well, stress is different for everybody. There are certain situations that you may encounter that you don't feel as stressed about, but if I was in the same situation, I might be more stressed. So everybody is different. And avoiding stress isn't realistic because life happens, let's face it. And we can't stop life from happening, but we can pay attention to those warning signs and adjust if stress is becoming overwhelming. Some unhealthy ways, because let's face it, this is life. And sometimes we don't make the best decisions on how to handle certain situations. And a lot of us may fall into some unhealthy or negative ways of coping with stress levels. So, you know, if you find yourself increasing on your alcohol intake, you've gone from that one glass of wine to unwind in the evening to two or three, maybe two to three nights a week to every night, depending on what's going on overspending. All of us love our retail therapy. You hear people talk about that all the time, but it can be a double-edged sword and it can become a negative cycle if finances is also one of your stressors. You get that sudden high, that feeling you're buying yourself something new, it makes you feel good, but then the next week when your electric bill is due or your mortgage or rent and you look and say, I really shouldn't have done that. You've added more stress for that quick, simple pleasure overeating. A lot of times, you know, we stress eat. 
Some people don't eat when they're stressed. I don't know about you, but I am not one of those people. (laughs) If you're already having self-esteem issues or you're already overweight and then you stress eat, that can have a negative impact as well because then you're beating yourself up later for what you ate and how you're not able to lose the weight and that kind of thing. Then you get stressed about that. And then you get stressed about that. (laughs) And self-confidence and self-worth go down. Um, Smoking, drug use are also two things that are unhealthy ways of coping with stress. Keeping an eye on those things, reaching out to a community therapist or your physician if you find yourself falling into some of those categories where you might need some extra help. Some great healthy strategies for stress relief is exercise, whether it's going to the YMCA and really working out hard on the weights or the treadmill, or even if it's just a leisurely walk to get fresh air. It does something really good for our bodies. Setting goals, teeny tiny goals to get to a bigger goal. It doesn't have to be anything huge, but when you start setting those small goals and you can check them off your list, it makes you feel pretty good. And celebrating those accomplishments, looking at things that you're grateful for. But like I said, again, consider speaking with a healthcare provider about your worries if you're feeling like what you're going through is not normal. That's all really great and super interesting. I love hearing you talk about healthy strategies for reducing stress and providing some relief. What are some ways that you can actually prevent stress from becoming overwhelming by doing some of those things on a regular basis? All right. So doing some of those things, but also listening to your body and stopping yourself before you become too out of control. When you feel yourself getting stressed, you know, your heart rate increases. Some of those things we talked about in the very beginning heart rate increases, sweaty hands, shakiness, nervousness, feeling. So being able to recognize those things before you're overly out of control or at a point where you're having a panic attack or an anxiety attack, shortness of breath and those kind of things, because that can be very scary to people. We have a lot of people that have had a panic attack and they're like, I didn't know what I was experiencing, whether it was a heart attack or something else like that, when it was really just that buildup of stress that caused that anxiety. You know, we talked about that earlier, that it could also be what happens here is that we have an increase in folks using our services. So you might be cashing people out and there might suddenly be 15 people in line and that panicky feeling that you have inside of you. But if you could just breathe, just think about, I'm going to panic here, I'm just going to breathe. Or I think you'd had something really interesting before you said just Say you need a minute and walk away. Yeah. Taking deep breaths is always a good thing. Sometimes we we forget about breathing when we're stressed out. And sometimes just taking a time out. You know, timeouts aren't just for kids. And if you have coworkers that you're working with where you can say, hey, I need some help. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed here instead of keeping it inside. I always tell people there's more room out than there is in. So communication and talking with your peers about what you're experiencing. There's a lot of great apps out there. The Calm app is one of them that can just give you just a few minutes of just simple meditation that can be helpful. So meditation, yoga, breathing techniques, like we just talked about, timeouts. That When you take a timeout, it gives you a chance to respond versus then react. A lot of times when we're in situations, we react on that emotion And then when we look back on it, we might have made a different decision if we had walked away from it for a minute, calmed ourselves, and thought through it. So that's a good piece of information. Taking good care of your body, nutrition, exercise, and sleep. Sleep is so important. Without sleep, it's like trying to drive a car with no fuel in it. You know, you really have to give your body that time. Keeping a positive attitude, choosing to be happy regardless of the circumstances. You know, we can walk around and be negative all day long about all the teeny tiny things that aren't going right. Then we miss all the good things that are going right. So trying to keep a positive attitude throughout your day, your work week or whatnot. Letting go and accepting things that you can't control. We had an experience last week where we tried to record this podcast and the audio wouldn't work and different things weren't working and we had to reschedule. But It was like, okay, we're just going to take a deep breath. Maybe today wasn't meant to be the day for this, and that's okay. So not being able to control everything is okay. And I think a lot of times people 
They don't like that feeling of losing control. Another way to keep your stress level down is learning to say no. We sometimes put ourselves on the back burner constantly saying yes, 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 because we want to be helpers and we we know our family needs us. But if we don't pour into ourselves, we won't have anything to give. So scheduling those me days or those weekends where you do something healthy for yourself, those things are all very important. So while you can't control what's going on around you, we know we can control the way we feel. It's probably one of the toughest skill sets to build. I know I haven't built mine. After all the years I've lived. It takes practice for sure. It takes practice every day. (laughs) Determined mind that I can control the way that I feel about this. Yeah, we say all the time, you can't control the situation or what's happening, but you control the way you respond to it. Another big thing is just talking and communication. I think I said that earlier, but staying connected to your support network, the people that you trust, the people that bring you joy and happiness. And being open with them about what your triggers are. You know, if there are certain things that you already know are going to stress you out, express that to someone else so that they understand what your response may be to the situation. And then they can be that support for you when you may start to feel a little anxiety or stress. That's great advice. Well, anything else you want to add here at the end, Janet? Does everybody feel calm? I'm extremely relaxed and calm, and I'm (laughs) thinking about all the ways that I can manage stress and move forward and the takeaways from Mm -hmm. this, and you've given us some really great tools today, and I think it'll be helpful for not only the folks at work at Outer Banks Health, but also folks in our community as we prepare for our busy season. Oh, absolutely, and I just thank you guys for the opportunity to be here today, and it's a beautiful day outside, so a good stress reliever for this afternoon would be a nice beach walk. Yeah. Also, before the beach gets crowded. (laughs) Yes. Hope to see you out there. All right, sounds good. If you like this podcast, take a look at our others on outerbankshealth.org slash podcasts. Thank you so much for being here. Take care.